a great crowd. Uh, we have all right, brand new uh, Fox poll on the Republican primary. It shows Vivek Ramaswamy is now surging. Take a look at these numbers he has. Now, Donald Trump's still up by a significant amount, 53 percent. Governor DeSantis is in second place, 16. And Vivek Ramaswamy, for the first time, with double digits, 11 uh, percent. Uh, and by the way, you know, pretty healthy growth. Anyway, joining us now is Vivek Ramaswamy. But before that, uh, let's take a look at him and a confrontation he had. It's gone kind of viral, an exchange with a voter. I believe this was in Iowa. Take a look. I'm just wondering what your views on same-sex couples I don't have a negative view of same-sex couples, but I do have a negative view of a tyranny of the minority. I believe that we live in a country where free adults should be free to dress how they want, behave how they want, and that's fine. But you don't oppress, you don't become oppressive by foisting that on others. And that especially includes kids, because kids aren't the same as adults. And so I think adults are free to make whatever choices they want. I respect that you may have a different opinion, and that's okay. Part of what makes our country great is that you and I can be civil and have this conversation. Now, it hasn't all been work, but... Vivek also found some time to have a little bit of fun on the campaign trail, wrapping a little bit of Eminem. Let's see how he does. Opens his mouth, but the words won't come out. He's joking how everybody's joking now. The clock's run out. Time's up. Over. Plow. Snap back to reality. Oh. <laughs> anyway, Vivek Ramaswamy joins us right now. Uh, sir, how are you? Good to see you, John. How are you? Certainly better job than I could do, um, so I'm not going to be critical. Uh, but I wouldn't quit your day job on the rapping thing. Um, you know, I thought you said something Fair very... advice. <laughs> I, th I thought you said something very key in that exchange with that voter, that adults, consenting adults... Amer Americans believe in freedom. That's none of our business. I agree with you on that issue. Um, the question is, and where the controversy comes in, is people on the left... They want to indoctrinate our children. They feel that their values are superiors uh, to parental values. And I say, excuse me, teach them reading, writing, math, science, history, and computers, and then keep your personal views to yourself and let parents instill the values they cherish and believe in. Is that, is that a fair summation of where you stand? Absolutely spot on, Sean. And the reality is kids aren't the same as adults. So if gender dysphoria is such a condition of suffering, then why on earth are we going out of our way to create even more of it by spreading this ideology through young kids in our schools? What's really happened, Sean, is we have a tyranny of the minority in this country. We used to protect against the tyranny of the majority. And so that's where the LGBT rights movement came from is protect their rights. Well, my view is if you're an adult, live how you want. But what we have in this country is a new tyranny of a fringe minority. And I refuse to say that that somehow changes the language we use, changes how women compete in sports, changes which bathrooms people use, and let alone change the way we indoctrinate our children. No, I stand against that kind of tyranny, and I will do it with civility. I will do it with respect for every human being. That was a self-described pansexual who confronted me with what she thought were some difficult questions. She and I disagreed. And so it's not that I look down on her as a human being. But I refuse to abide by this new tyranny of this cult. And that's what I stand for. Let me ask you, um, I know the issue of your of your voting record has come up quite a bit lately. Uh, election records in Ohio's Franklin County, where you live, show that you registered to vote in November 2021, not as a Republican, but as unaffiliated. Uh, you did say you voted for the libertarian presidential candidate in 04 and didn't vote in the presidential election again until 2020 when you voted for Donald Trump. Why? I mean, why did you have a lack well, of interest? Well, the truth is, Sean, I have. Well, the truth is, for most of my 20s, like so many people in their 20s, I understand where they're coming from. Young people are disaffected from professional politicians. George Bush, John Kerry didn't inspire me. John McCain, Barack Obama didn't inspire me. Mitt Romney, Barack Obama did not inspire me. So like so many young people, I was badly disaffected from professional politicians. I think Donald Trump was the single greatest president we've had in my lifetime, the single greatest president in the 21st century. And so when he delivered, I voted for him in 2020. And why, did you not, why did you not vote for him in 2016? Did you not see the potential? 
because I didn't believe it. Exactly. I was skeptical. I was a jaded person in my 20s. And like so many people in their 20s, Sean, I get it. I'm not a professional politician. You could tell from the Eminem rap or otherwise. We are reaching young people in this campaign in droves, Sean. Many of my supporters are young. We're bringing them to our party and our movement for the first time. And a part of the reason why is I understand it. I get it. I'm a millennial. I got my first job in 2007, right on the eve of the 2008 financial crisis in New York City. So I understand why many millennials are jaded. The 2008 bailouts that came under a Republican administration, which was just crony capitalism. To me, I don't care much about the distinctions between traditional Republicans or traditional Democrats. The truth is, in many ways, I could care less for either of them. I stand for the America First movement, putting the interests of this nation first. That means putting all Americans first, even those in Hawaii, even those on the south side of Chicago, where I visited, or Kensington in the inner city of Philadelphia, where traditional Republican candidates don't go. I think that putting America first means putting all Americans first. And yes, I'm using the Republican Party as a vehicle to advance that agenda, not as a professional politician, but as a successful businessman, an outsider, and yes, somebody who is a member of that different generation. Let I'm me ask you one last question, and it might be a point of disagreement between us. Um, in one of your books, you talked about the inheritance tax rate being as high as 59 percent, and you supporting that, saying passing wealth from parents to children breeds inequality and hereditary aristocracy. This, this is all money people have already paid taxes on. Why would you let the government basically take another bite of the apple and steal more money? You know how this game works, Sean. That's an opposition research photograph of the book, lift out, put it on Twitter. The reality is the context I was going through in that book was a thought experiment saying, let's bring the income tax down to a flat tax as low as possible. And in that context, that's how high the inheritance tax would have to be to make up for it. To be clear, I didn't write candidate books. I wrote it thoughtful. I wrote three thoughtful books. And I was honest in doing thought experiments in those books, but the opposition research is now, as you know well in politics, so you, do you know not, how it goes, just for the record, a lot of lies. But you do not support that. Yep. Do you support any inheritance tax? I or? absolutely do not support that. I, I absolutely reject that. That's that's the and short support, answer to that question. So but just to be you know clear, what? you support, I support no low inheritance tax, tax no everybody. death tax, no death tax at all. No change to the status quo. That's what I support on the death well, tax. Well, the status quo Bring is 40 percent. The status quo is 40 percent. Do you support 40 percent or do you support nothing? I support a 12 percent flat tax across the board of every kind, including from inheritance to income to capital gains to corporate. So you would lower it from One 40 to 12. That you can, on well, every measure across the board, income to estate, 12 and a half percent across the board. All right, Vivek Ramaswamy, thank you. Appreciate you being with us. Coming up next, Biden celebrating his one-year anniversary of that so-called wonderful Bidenomics Inflation Reduction Act.